Hi, welcome back. This is Donna with ABC Cake Decorating Supplies. This is our second stop on our royal icing journey. Now that you've learned how to make royal icing, you're probably thinking, okay, what do I do with it? Well, I wanna show you a couple easy things that you can do that will just make your cakes accent just, just over the top. One of the things I'd like to show you is how to do appliques. Now, appliques become a royal icing. It's a piece of sugar that you make in advance. You can make them um, a couple days in advance. The thing is you have to make sure you let them dry. So it will take a couple days. But once they're dry, you can put them away and you can save them for six months up to a year and they will still be good. The reason is if you remember with our royal icing, no type of shortening or oil at all. So there's nothing in, the, in them to go bad. So, first thing you need to do is, hmm, what kind of embroidery type of application do I wanna do? Well, if you have a little kid's coloring book, they are really good, but you just find, and we will put these up on our website, you will find different patterns, all kinds of patterns. They've got bir birds, birdhouses, anything that you would like to do. What I found is I will put it in a sheet protector my picture, and then I just put a piece of cardboard on the back for a hard backing so that it'll stay nice and rigid so that it'll dry. Also, one of the things you need to do is make sure, like in these patterns, if you notice, every line is connecting. Just like on this cake, you wanna make sure that all of your icing is connecting because when it dries, it needs to be sturdy enough so that you can pick it up so it doesn't break. You will have breakage anyway, but you don't wanna to have to break it on purpose, okay? So you wanna make sure, and I'm gonna turn this a little bit for you, just like this flower here. Even though there's a lot of circles, if you notice all the circles are connecting, that way there it has a platform when you pick it up so it doesn't break. But you probably need to make five or six more of each one that you need anyway, because some of them will break. So we've got our plastic. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you, we're just gonna do one of these. It kinda of looks like a little mum. I'm just gonna show you how to do one of these. What I usually do is like on, on any type of cake that I'm doing, let's say that the, you wanna do five big mums, a couple medium mums and a few small ones. I will print these out on my printer and I will have a bunch of them already laid out and I'll just, I'll just do a whole bunch of them while I'm out. Have your colors, have them already ready. I have some colors here, and then you have, you're ready to go. One of the things you have to remember though, royal icing does dry. And it dries, it, it can dry pretty fast, especially when you're using smaller tips. So you wanna make sure, if they're already ready to go, that you have a wet paper towel or you have something that you can stick them in so they will stay moist. Also another trick that I have, and this is a size three tip. I'm gonna outline these in a three. The larger the tip, the less fragile they'll be, but in later lessons as we get along, we're gonna talk a little bit about lace points, which is basically embroidery like this or appliques, but it's done with very small tips and they're done on a very small scale. Here I have a few and I'll just show them to you just to kind of get you excited. But look at how small these are. And you can take these and you can stick these in your cakes and you can make these, like I say, a, a year in advance or so. So whenever you need them, you, you'll have them. But these are super fragile because they're made with a very small tip, but yet they're, they're all still connecting. So th that's a lace point. So and basically it's all gonna work the same. One nice thing about royal icing is once you've learned how to make it and you start playing with it, there are so many different things you can do with it. What I have is I have my tip. Now, if I, have, if I start tipping and I have to go do something, I will always take my icing and I will stick it out just a little bit so that if I don't have this near me but I have to go get something, that way there when I come back, if that piece is dry, I can just knock it off and then my icing inside is gonna be soft. You don't wanna really take a pen or anything, a straight pen, a, 
or anything and, and go in there because all that dried can end up going inside and then when you st start to pipe, you can get little dry particles in there. So you don't want to do that. So we've got our icing and this is at, at just the regular stiff icing. If you're making it from scratch, it's the original icing before you thin it out. And if you're buying it from the box, generally from the box, they'll give you the stiff consistency and then you just reduce it from there. So this is my stiff. I've got just, it's just basically water. And then I've got my little paintbrush. And the reason why I have that, and I'm gonna take my glasses off because I can't see. When you start to pipe, and you want to make sure, again, everything is grease-free. No grease on here. You don't need to, to wet, oil it or anything. And that's why you want to use this, because this will let it just fall right off. We're going to start, and what we're going to do is we're going to start on the inside. And if you remember, even back when we were learning the, the Cake Journey basics, when you were writing, we're going to go ahead, touch to attach, and then we're going to lift up and then we're going to squeeze and we're going to go around we're just going to let the icing drop. Okay. And then when we get to the end, we're going to stop and we're going to pull this one here. It, it met up, it met up pretty well. So we're not going to have to worry about using our paintbrush, but sometimes if you get a high spot or something, you might need to take a little bit of water, dab it and just smooth it out just a little bit. So if that happens, that's what I'll be using that for. Okay. So, then you come down here. And then if you notice when you're looking at it, everything here, and I'll just squeeze this out a second. Everything here connects. And you can kind of see a pattern here. We've got a circle. And then we're going to do the outer ones, whether it's the large ones, mediums or small. And then you just follow your pattern. Then we're going to do the insides here. And then you just keep following along until it's all done. But you do have to make sure they connect. That, that, that's the biggest, most important thing here. Biggest, most important thing here. And so here we're going to connect it, lift up, squeeze, and come around and attach it. Come over here, lift up, squeeze, stop, and attach. And this can take a while. <laughs> so some of those beautiful cakes you see, they could have been working on those for a very long time. And then I'll show you this in just a second. Okay. Now, depending upon how many you need to do, you'll know how much time you need to set aside. But what's nice about this is if you want, you can come back to it later and, and pick up where you left off. The royal icing's not going to care, just as long as it's not dried out. Then I just kind of want to show you here take your paper and slide it out. And then that that's going to be your applique. All right. And once your applique, and usually I just set them aside on a hard piece of cardboard or something and just let them dry. I just set them in another room where nobody's going to mess with them. And then in a day or two, I'll come back. And these are butterfly wings that I did. Now these I already had taken off once. But these I have not removed yet. Oh, see, they, they come off so easy, this one here. And if they don't come off right away, just kind of lightly pull on it. And that's where, if any breakage is going to be, it's going to be when, when you remove it. And that is why it's so important that you make sure, just like on this butterfly wing, that everything connects. You've got to have all these lines connect or there would be no structure there for your butterflies. Okay. And then after you're done, this is when they can go ahead and they can go on to a buttercream cake because this cake is just iced in buttercream. And what I've got here is my tip. And I'm just going to do a butterfly body. So how I'm going to do that, I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to wiggle. Give my butterfly a little bit of something for the wings to st stick into. And then I want to do the little one. And we don't have a pink butterfly. So then butterflies, if you look, you do kind of have a small and a large part. 
You want the small parts to be up, so you need to make sure that they're pretty much the same. Then you're just gonna stick them in there. And you may need to use a little bit of a paper towel or something to prop it up while it's drying. And then if you want, like these guys here, let me take this off. I just used nothing but a, a flower stamen, folded it in half, and then you can stick it in the front part of there so your little butterfly will have antennae. So this was our lesson on appliques. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, please contact me at Donna at RRvideo.com. Our next segment is going to be how to color flow with royal icing. Hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching.